What's up guys? So today is going to be installing the Cobb XLE bypass valve. Really good quality by Cobb of course. And the reason why I bought this was because I have a confession to make. My car has been leaking boost. And I mentioned in the other video where I was rolling the fenders that that sound that you heard, uh, that sound wasn't normal actually and it was due to the reason that I was leaking boost and also another reason is because with this stock bypass valve right here there's been basically reviews saying once you do stage one once you do a front mount intercooler installation once you do all that once you have all that added onto your car it's recommended that you basically modify or change the stock bypass valve to either an aftermarket bypass valve or a blowout valve uh, but I heard for especially for Subarus it's better to do bypass valves just because it doesn't harm the engine as much unless you tune it of course but I'm running I'm going to be running the Cobb XLE bypass valve so how to install that is really really simple actually uh, all you have to do is replace the stock with the Cobb one you get to keep the stock vacuum lines because I mean as long as there's nothing wrong with it you can keep it there you don't have to replace it with the one cop gives you as long as your kit comes with a gasket which is this thing really important to have this otherwise you leak boost without it pretty much so it's important to have that and have your vacuum lines correctly tightenedly installed into your bypass valve so right now what we're gonna do is I already took off the old one as you saw earlier and right now what I'm trying to do is replace it with the new one but I have to install basically the vacuum lines to it first let me show you guys what I mean by that alright guys so right now what I'm doing is I'm taking this vacuum line right here I'm going to be placing it on this side of the hole so let me just show you guys real quick there's one two and then three holes for the vacuum line of this Cobb bypass valve the reason why is because it's really nice from Cobb they said you could uh, have it in either angle that fits where your vacuum line routing is so I'm going to put, be putting it in that specific spot only because it's easier for the vacuum line to run there from where my engine and everything how the whole setup is so I'm going to be putting it there but the thing is I need to use Loctite right here which is really cool they give you Loctite and to tighten basically the screw for the vacuum line so that this doesn't come out because this is really important that's the whole reason why is so you won't leak boost it won't leak any sort of air and it's to completely tighten this thing so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now alright guys so I went ahead and installed all the plugs including the vacuum line right there you could see it and I installed the other two to basically cover up the holes and it was really easy just use the Loctite make sure that you get a sufficient amount around the threads for those of you who use Loctite before and then just go ahead and screw it in and that's pretty much permanently like that's it it's it's permanently set there uh won't come out whatsoever so that's a good thing so next step now is to actually install this whole unit onto the car itself so we're gonna go ahead and do that i'm gonna have to use the gasket for those of you who don't know what i'm talking about is this thing I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the back of this and onto the car and from there we're gonna see how to adjust the spring tension which is right on top all right guys so I went ahead and installed the bypass valve onto the car all I need to do is hook up the vacuum line and see if I need to adjust the spring tension so let me show you guys what I did so for WRX engines for the Mishimoto intercooler kit what I did here was basically, this is the new unit here, and then this is the flange right here that go, that's actually, it came with the Mishimoto. This goes all the way to here, and this goes 
pretty much this is the cold side so this goes this pipe goes straight to the throttle body intake and this is held on with one screw here and one screw in the bottom where you guys can't see it this go this nose pretty much goes straight to uh, you don't even know what it, this is called <laughs> but this goes straight to the engine with this piping right here this black piping I'm pointing at right here that goes straight to the nose of this so all I need to do now is pretty much install the vacuum line that goes right here to this metal piece so I'm gonna go ahead and do that with this piece right here this is the vacuum lining hose so I'm gonna go ahead and put this on here and then from there we'll see what happens so next thing that we're gonna do is every so everything's installed everything's good to go bypass valve is installed uh, vacuum line is installed everything's tight now all we need to do is check the spring tension so I will put down a link in my description of pretty much the installation of this thing and what tightening or loosening the spring does so tightening count no sorry tightening clockwise of of this thing right here this thing in the middle tightening that thing clockwise tightens the spring tension which means you have more chance of a compression surge which allows more like fluttering sounds and loosening it counterclockwise basically loosens the spring and therefore doesn't have as high of a compression surge so that's actually a good thing you don't want a compression surge because that'll sort of hard to explain but just pretty much it's bad for the turbo and especially for Subaru engines you want it to be more of a recirculating valve so you want air pretty much to go back into the intake so that's why it's always better to have a little bit more loose than tight so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and it requires a 13 millimeter wrench and I'm gonna be using an allen key to pretty much adjust it so I'll show you guys how that works so right here guys uh, I already loosened it but bas basically with a 13 millimeter you want to use to like tighten or loosen this as I'm doing right here so the whole point is that is so that you can adjust the spring tension so I'm gonna go ahead and use the allen key to tighten or s loosen the spring tension inside so right now what I'm doing I'm tightening it based on going clockwise so right now it's getting tighter and tighter so right now this is super tight meaning you're gonna have a lot of compression surge going on but if I turn it this way which is counterclockwise if I go about like right here about right here or so it seems good you don't want it too loose either remember that guys you don't want it too loose but you want it a good moderate like pretty much in between so I'm gonna go ahead and measure again I'm tightening it all the way just to make sure I'm not going too loose here but I'm gonna go ahead and do it again so there I think that's pretty good right there so now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it with a 13 millimeter wrench again use my fingers first and now we'll tighten it so that's pretty much it guys that's how you install the bypass valve this is the Cobb XLE bypass valve so every as far as installation goes that's how everything pretty much Again, you want to make sure everything is tight. Uh, you can go ahead and use a zip tie or whatever and tie down all the hoses. But right now, that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and test drive it. Fortunately, my camera is dying right now. So I don't think I can record it on here. I'm going to see if I can use my phone. But in terms of installation goes, that's pretty much it. Again, I said I'll put the link in the description below of where I got the installation from. And just leave any questions in the comment section, guys. I'll catch you guys later and I'll keep you guys updated as always. See ya.